All right, so you've got issues with your engine. You sent a bolt down it. Beat up the piston. The walls are okay. Slight scoring, not nothing too bad. But you got a bent valve. I don't know if you can see that there. The valve is bent pretty bad. I mean, not terrible, but you can tell, definitely tell something went through it. We're going to try to straighten this thing today. First off, you got to get a valve out of your head on these little 2.3 Ford Ranger engines. It's kind of difficult, but you got to basically just push the valve spring in and slide that rocker arm right on out of there. That's all there's to it. Get the valve out and go from there. Alrighty, first step is uh, you're not going to be able to see this real well. You want to find yourself a flat surface, surface or relatively so. Turn it so you can see the light there. Yeah. And now if you push this valve up, up here on the shoulder a little bit, it gives you a little more room to work with. And just give it a wrap. And pull it back down. We are a little better. Do that again. Now, we're getting mighty close here. A little bit more. Whoops. Alright, then go ahead and chuck this sucker up in the drill. You want to chuck it on the end back where the uh, keepers go. You don't want to scar up the shaft. Chuck it on the end back where the keepers go. You don't want to scar up the shaft. Then spin it up. You see it's not perfect, but it's getting close. All right, now you got a little bit of a wobble to get out of there yet. So what you need to do is determine where the high point is. Leave it in the drill so it's easier to hang on to. Put it again on a flat point. Um, you can see right there, it kind of bends to the left a little bit. So what you're going to do, I'm one-handed so I can't do this. You're going to tip it that way just a little bit like that. I'm going to exaggerate it here. And then hit that side of the face with the hammer. Till it's nice and straight. I'll show you the results. Right now if you look at the relation between the face of the valve and the very curved neck of the stem right there you see that that looks fairly close but we got a bend came back in right here. We're going to straighten that out the way we did before with the valve stem laying flat on the table and hitting it with a hammer. Alright back over here at the head got our hole there valve is decently straight we're going to slide it back up in there make sure it slides all the way up it looks like we got a little bit of a let's turn on the flash here a little bit of a gap on the one side right there that's okay we're going to do some grinding on it make so that it's a little bit better I'll show you how to do that alrighty now for this step you want a drill that runs pretty true as in the chuck doesn't really vibrate much see how nice and straight that goes you can still see we've got a little bit of a bend in there that doesn't matter because the shaft is straight we're going to do a little bit of red redneck machining here see if we can get this better um, it's going to be pretty noisy you won't be able to hear me very well but bear with me all right you want something that's small and light ain't going to take an aggressive bite you want your heavier tool clamped in the vise like this we will try to do this one-handed just to show you real quick how it's supposed to work i'm going to push this button with my uh elbow here get it spinning not real fast just kind of slow turn on your dremel here Just want to take off the high spot. Kind of match that face with the angle you're cutting at. See, we're about 
16th inch out of the way here. If I'm going to keep working at this, I'll show you when it's done. Alright, what I've done here, welded a drill bit to the back of it. We are going to put some grinding compound, metal polish in there. Spin her up and polish it up. See how well we can get them surfaces to mate. Um, you can't really see, but I did... I did get it kind of ground down all right. Um, yep, then we'll see if it has compression. This is not a high horsepower engine. It's a boat engine. Um, it's a Ford 2.3 liter four cylinder and it will get a full rebuild one day, but it is just to get it on the lake this time. All right, now, as you can see, we have polished metal all the way around. Now, I know that is not perfect. We're not going to have super great compression on that thing. I just snapped the drill bit off the back there. That's why I like using old drill bits because they snap right off. Um, it's not real smooth and here's why. I used white diamond metal polish right there um, because it cuts. It's for polishing like mag wheels and stuff, but it cuts very aggressively compared to valve lapping compound. So if we use that and a lot of pressure, you get it done pretty quick, but won't be quite as pretty. And I also should add that you don't have to weld a drill bit on the back of your valve. That's just what you do if you're a redneck and uh, you don't have a valve lapping tool to connect to your drill. You definitely want to use a drill. It'll make it a lot faster. Valve lapper would work, but I like using a drill. And... You can be careful. I TIG welded it so I didn't get a lot of heat into the valve, but I'm not too worried about that as there's no, no incredible valve springs on this engine or anything. It's just bone stock everything. All right, let's get her stuck back together, see what we can do. So since this is a solid rocker cam um, stock, I'm going to take a little bit off the top of the valve stem here, just on the bench grinder. Um, just because we did settle that seat in a little ways and I want to make sure I'm not cracking the valve when it's supposed to be shut. Alright, so all the other spark plugs are pulled and that's cylinder number four, the one we had to do that valve work on. We now have 60 PSI of compression on cranking. I'm hoping the valve seats a little more with use, but 60 PSI is enough to make that cylinder fire after the engine heats up so and at higher rpms which is where this engine was really struggling so it should get me through the summer and yeah it had absolutely nothing before like it didn't even make the needle jump at all there was a good 3 16 gap there under the one side of the valve but that's a redneck way to get a little compression back into a bent valve cylinder so you can get on through the season and when I got the boat it didn't it didn't run correctly it seemed to run okay but when you tried to lug it or run the boat up the river you could barely do eight miles per hour so it had the issue I took the head off and seen all the nut and bolt imprints across the top of the cylinder piston and I knew what happened um, and the main issue was a bent valve slightly scored rings which is a lot of my issue. If I would have correctly lapped the valve down to the proper smoothness, I probably would have got about 90 PSI. But that's good enough for me um, just to make it fire a little bit and get that uh, vacuum working right and stuff. It's amazing how much one cylinder can affect the performance of an engine when it's only 80 horsepower. All right, now for the big test. Got everything hooked up temporarily, spark plug wires on, head on. Um, the, like I said, the cylinder with the bent valve only has uh, 60 PSI of compression, but it should be alright. Let's see what she does.